Hi everyone, Nikki here. So I wanted to share with you guys a couple tips and tricks for shooting with my Westcott Solux in studio today. And the reason for that is because for sure, hands down, they are my number one go-to lighting source these days. I have tons of strobes, all kinds of flash systems, and I keep going back to the Solux. And I did a shoot yesterday with Sunny, who I shoot all the time, just some promo work for my studio. And I dressed her up as a fairy and I used my Solix. We were in and out probably within, I don't know, 10 minutes and we were done. And each image takes 10 minutes or less to edit. So when I posted these images in my Facebook group today, I had a bunch of people contact me and say, listen, how did you do it? How is it possible to edit something in under 10 minutes to look this amazing? And the key guys, the key always is lighting. So if you're lighting your exposure, your you know, everything about your set is on point and you do it initially correctly straight out of the camera, then your editing is way, way easier and quicker. And the reason that I love to shoot at, you know, wide open apertures like f1.2 or f1.4, 1.8 is strictly because the editing process afterwards is so much easier. So if you're shooting at like f13, f14 in studio, then yeah, you've got a lot of work to do because your pores are going to be super sharp and all of the blemishes as well will be really sharp. And so that increases your workflow and your retouching time. So my suggestion is it doesn't have to necessarily be the Westcott Solix, although there's a link below, you can check it out. I do highly recommend them because they're sturdy, they're really hardy, they are just easy to work with and there's nothing fragile about them, which is what I hated about the Westcott Spider Light system that I used to use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just show you the video that I took and I did some posing and I thought I would share that with you because that's always something people wanna know about. I've got my lighting set up, I've got my posing, I'm going to just go through some poses um, and then I'm going to show you how quickly and easily I edit one of these images. Now keep in mind, I'm the model. I didn't have time to grab one today after getting all the questions. I thought, okay, I should do something really quick. I know I haven't posted anything to YouTube in a long time. So it's just me. Keep in mind, 52 year old grandmother here, guys. I am not a 25 year old model. so. Don't judge me too harshly. And on a side note as well, I'm gonna put a link down below. I'm also teaching a workshop in Virginia this August and it's gonna be um, hosted by another photographer but it's taking place in River Farm. It's going to take place at River Farm which this home was originally owned by George Washington. So we're going to do an old master style theme to this and it's definitely something if you're on the East Coast you're not going to want to miss out on and I would love to have you. So, so let's get going guys. Take a look at this. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going through some flow posing and basically every time the shutter goes off I'm just switching up a little bit. So that's what I call flow posing. Additionally, you can look at the lights. So I have a Westcott soft box as my key light and it's feathered across me so it's not pointing directly at me. And then I have a bare bulb Westcott Solix light just pointed towards the backdrop. And so there is some division in the light. And all I'm doing here, guys, is I'm just moving around. I'm trying to make sure that I maintain those triangles, right? So the triangles are with the legs and with the arms, and I'm sitting on a step stool. So it's like a little tiny step ladder or whatever, but it's really, really good for these type of shots where, you know, you want to show the legs and you want to get some height, but you don't want them necessarily standing up. And like I said, just bear with me as the model. I know that I there's nothing amazing about how I look, but I did want to just show you some flow posing and you know, a lot of people don't understand that if you put your back to the light and then turn your subject towards it like this and then turn the face over, you can get some really pretty shots. And all I tell my subjects when I'm posing them is, 
you know, reach up like you're touching a leaf or an apple or, you know, pretend that you're petting something or you're reaching for a flower. And all of these subtle nuances and movements will actually contribute to really impactful imagery. And the key to getting really impactful images and telling a good story is always getting some kind of emotion. And that emotion, like I tell my clients, I want you either to be sad or angry. I'm never looking for happy. That's not what I'm going for. I'm looking for people that are contemplative or wonder or amazement or anything like that. So like these, these poses here that I'm showing, like looking down, reaching for something, making sure that your hands and your fingers and your feet and everything are, you know, feminine and pretty and nothing's too chunky and, you know, distracting. So these are just some of the things that I do, and honestly, um, I usually, there's, you can see the lamp behind me by, at the bottom there, I usually have that turned on, I forgot to turn it on for you guys today, but what I want to do now is, you know, these are some really pretty poses and stuff like that that are super helpful for, you know, when you're trying to tell a story and create an atmosphere. So I'm just going to move ahead now, and I'm going to show you an edit and I promise you that this edit is going to be 10 minutes or under. These go so fast and it's because I lit them correctly to begin with. So let's get going. Okay, so here is an image that I brought in from Adobe Camera Raw and let's get started. So the first thing that I would do is I would do some retouching. So I'm gonna duplicate my layer. And I'm going to zoom in and you can see that I'm a little out of focus in the face, but that's typically what happens when, you, when you're shooting yourself and you can't nail focus so perfectly. So, so just bear with me when it comes to that. And so again, this is me, 52-year-old woman, not exactly a youthful and all that gorgeousness, but... I'm going to start with dodging and burning like I always do. And like I said, guys, we're going to do this in under 10 minutes. So let's get our dodging and burning. And all I do is I go 1% flow, 100% opacity, and I just focus on the shadows. So nasal folds and most other wrinkles are just shadows. So the effort here is just to minimize, right? So I'm not trying to make myself look super young. But as you can see, that by shooting this, I think this was at 1.4, something like that, um, what it enabled me to do is to pretty much keep my skin super soft so that I don't have a whole bunch of work to do. Okay, so I'm just coming in and I'm just lightening up the areas on my face that I feel like are a little dark or need a little bit of brightening up. And there's a little dark spot on my neck, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And all I'm doing, guys, is I'm prepping this image for my frequency separation action, all right? Um, I'm gonna come in and brighten up my eyes because there wasn't a lot of light in them. And you can also see that I've got quite a bit of red in them so I'm going to come in after and I'll get rid of the red. But my advice is to always brighten up the eyes as much as you can because the eyes are always the focus point of any portrait. So brighten those up and on the brow bone as well. And this is about all I'm going to do for dodging and burning and I'll show you why because I do tend to focus more dodging and burning now using the other method, which is, I'll show you in one second here. I'm just gonna lighten up the light on my arm a little bit more. And look at all my yummy veins in my hand. That's what happens when you've lived a life though. So that's all good. All right. Okay, so Let's just zoom out a little bit and take a look. Do I need a little bit on my feet? Yeah, just a little bit on my calf here. Okay, so before and after, do you see how that just lightened everything up a bit? I'm going to lighten up 
the backdrop just a little bit. This is one of my newest additions to my backdrop store. I painted this in Photoshop. It's kind of, you know, like an old master style backdrop and had it printed. And I really love it. I've always wanted one and I haven't had one up until now, so I'm pretty happy with this one. Now grabbing my burn, I'm just going to burn down the floor here a little bit. I want the floor to be darker like this. Darken, kind of making like a vignette. Do you know what I mean? Sort of like this. Okay, let's look at the before and the after. That's before and that's after. So you see how I focused the light more on me and made it less distracting. So I'm gonna go ahead and flatten that now, guys. And now I'm gonna duplicate my layer. And here in my retouch set is the frequency separation action. I'm just gonna click OK for that amount of blur. I'm going to choose the low layer down here. I'm gonna choose my mixer brush and make sure sample all layers is turned off and I'm gonna reduce my flow down to about 10 or 11. And now I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna make sure I have a soft brush chosen. And little circles, I'm just going to soften all the veins on my hand. Wish I could do that in real life. Yeah, just soften. I'm not, I'm not getting rid of everything. I'm just, little circles are just going to soften everything. And like I said before, when you shoot wide open, half of this softening has already been accomplished. So that's definitely one of the primary benefits to shooting at a wider open aperture than let's say f14 or something smaller like that. Okay, let's get a little on the legs here. It's really good for blending in different color issues as well. And now it can really get rid of a lot of that shadow as well. So the size of your brush in direct relation to the area that you're affecting, right guys? And that's almost done. There. So let's close the whole group before and after. Good enough. Reduce. Flatten. Okay. So now the next thing that I will do with this is I'm just going to add a little bit of light here. So I'm going to choose an orange color, change my blend mode to overlay, and just paint a little bit of light, make sure I have the right brush, and bump up my flow a little bit, and we're just going to go ahead and do that as a base, right about there, and now I'm going to choose a gold color somewhere in there like about that. Gradient. I'm going to choose a diamond gradient and change the scale to 10 and then move it over here like about that and change my blend mode to screen. And I'm going to reduce my lower layer somewhere like that. And I'm going to reduce the opacity of the light itself right about there. Okay. That's good. Flatten that. And now I'm going to do that dodging and burning that I showed you that super fast. So just curves up. So bring it really bright like that. Double click on the layer here to open up your blend if. And then with this one, we're what we're going to do is we want to bring back the shadows from the underlying 
So do you see what we're doing? So I move this over, and then when I hold down my control key, I can separate, or sorry, my option key, sorry. Option, and all I'm looking at right here is the highlights on my face. I want it split it until it's more reasonable and natural looking. So right about there looks pretty good. Click OK. And now all I'm going to do is invert this. Command I to invert and now I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to repaint that back on. And this way you have way more control and it's super quick on how to affect those highlights. Okay, and that's really good. So let's see the before and the after. Do you see? I'm just going to tone that one down a smidge. Okay, now another curves adjustment layer. This time you're going to pull it all the way down like that. Double click on the layer here. And this time we're going to go to the other side and we're going to pull it over this way. There we go, and hold down your option key and split those two so that they start spreading and look a little bit more natural. And you can reduce that one a bit too. Click OK, invert that, good job. And now, same thing, we're going to only paint the shadows onto the areas where we really want them. Sometimes you don't even need to do the shadow layer. It just adds a little bit of contrast to the darks. Like this. Okay. Before and after. And then we can reduce I want to make sure I maintain that detail in that skirt. And that's the light before and after. Okay guys, that's it. So now all I'm going to do is run an action and I really have been really enjoying these ones lately in my epiphany set. So let's try Rory. That's pretty. Let's open it up and see what we want to do with it. Contrast is a bit strong so we'll reduce that to about there. Muted tones, that's really pretty. I love the muted tones. Right about there. Lift shadows, no, I actually don't want to use that one. And I do want to use the sun. So I'm just going to bring this gradient up to about here. Click OK, but I'm going to reduce it pretty drastically. I think right about there. And I'm going to paint that effect off of me. So right about here. Close the whole group before and after. And you can reduce it just a bit right about there. And, and we're done. So I just wanted to show you that you could edit this image and make it look like this in under 10 minutes. You could still go back into the retouch set and add some cherry cheeks and lips if you wanted. You could, you know, do, do more with it if you wanted to, but basically this is a sellable image. You could sell this as a large wall portrait any day. Any questions, guys? Feel free to ask, no problem, and have a great day. Until next time, see ya!